you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well, 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 thou with me. No, I do not know you. Nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor <laughs> this is not my nose. <laughs> Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent thy folly. I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. Why, there's for thee. And there. And there. All the people mad. Hold on. Are you the house? This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your cubs for two pence. Oh. Hey, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. Pop an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria. No, I struck him first. Yet it's no matter for that. Let him hold my hand. Sorry, no, I'll let you go. Come on, soldier. Put up your iron. You're well blessed. Come on. If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. Leave him. I must have an ounce of toilet. Now I love you. Ah, hold! Throw me all my life, I charge thee, hold. Man. Will it be ever thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves where manners ne'er were preached. Out of my sight. Oh, be not offended, dear Cesario. Oh. <coughs> Roots be gone. <laughs> oh, prithee, gentle friend, look thy fair wisdom, not thy passion sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou <laughs> how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up. That thou thereby mayest smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny. <laughs> <laughs> Relish is in this. Thou runs the stream. Or I am mad, or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense in leading steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Yeah. Come, I prithee, would thou be ruled by me? Neither my will. Oh, say so, and so be. Assemble myself in it, and I would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. <laughs> Joe, bless thee, Master Parson. Buenos dias, Sir Toby. <laughs> For as the old hermit of Prague, that never saw a pen in ink, very wittily said to the niece of King Gorgadot, that that is is. So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For what is that but that, and is but is. Well, to him, Sir Tophis.
Well, the good thing. Who calls them? Sir Topeth the curate, who comes to visit Malvario the lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Topus, Sir Topus, good Sir Topus, go to my lady. Out, hyperbolical thing! How vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? <laughs> Sir Topas, never was man thus wrong. Good Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They've laid me here in hideous darkness. Sayest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topas. Why? It hath bay windows transparent as barricados, and the clearest horse towards the south north, or as lustrous as ebony. And yet complainest thou of obstruction. I am not mad, Sir Topas. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman, thou erest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fall. Fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness. Fare thee well. Sir Topus! Sir Topus! My most exquisite Sir Topus. Nay, I am for all orders. Thou mightst have done without the beard and gown, he sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and tell me how thou finds him. I would be well rid of the slavery. If he can be conveniently delivered, I would he were, for I am now so far in offense with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety to support the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Hey Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Ooh. My lady is unkind to her dear. Oh, that's why she's so. She loves another. Ooh. Who calls? Huh? Good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink, and paper, as I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio! I am a fool. Alas, sir! How fell you beside your five wits? Oh, fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well. Then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. Live your property. Keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise you what you say. The minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Not I, sir. God buy you, good Sir Topus. Mary, amen. I will, sir. I will. Fool. Fool, I say. <laughs> Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? I am sent for speaking to you. Good fool, help me to a candle and some paper. I tell thee I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it. But tell me true. Are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Mm. Nay. I'll never believe a madman until I see his brains. Oh. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Fool, I will acquaint you to the highest degree. I will be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, oh. sir, I'll be with you again. In a trice like to the old life, your need to sustain. Who with dagger of lap in his rage and his wrath. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This 
pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that it wraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio? I couldn't find him at the elephant, yet there he was. And there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error. But tis no madness. Yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason within me that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. <laughs> Yet, if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man. <laughs> there before him and underneath that consecrated room, flight me the full assurance of your faith. My most jealous and too doubtful soul might live at peace. He shall conceal it. <laughs> what time we will our celebration keep according to my birth? What do you say? I will follow this good man and go with you. And having sworn truth ever will be true. <laughs> Then lead the way, good father. <laughs> and heaven so shine that they might fairly note this act of mine. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends. Aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. By my troth, sir, no. Though it please you to be one of my friends. <laughs> thou shalt not be the worse for me. There's gold. If you will tell your lady I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty for... <laughs> Mary, sir! <laughs> Bye bye to your bounty until I come again. I go, sir, as you say, sir. Let your bounty take a nap. I will awake it anon. <laughs> that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of a war. A bobbling vessel was he captain of, a shallow draft and bulk unprizable, with which such scathful grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet. The very envy and the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not that it was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou salt water thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to my mercy, whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear has made thine enemy? Porcino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess, on base and ground enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. 
that most ingrateful boy there by your side from the rude seas and raged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A rock past hope he was. His life I gave him and did there to add my love without intention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the dangers of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where being apprehended in his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wink, denied me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use, not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, no interim that amends vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months, this youth hath tended upon me. But more of that, anon. What would my lord, but past he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem service to him? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What, to perverse this? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and inauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offerings have breathed out that e'er devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even would it please, my lord, that shall be comfort. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love. A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. Hear me this. Since you two non regardants cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble breasted tyrant still. This minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him will I out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice a lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I. Most to joke hunt act, and willingly to do you a rest. A thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes. More than my life. More by all wars than ever I shall love wife. I am detested. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? How so for God myself? Is it so long? Come, away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband. Stay. <laughs> husband. I, husband, can he that deny? Her husband. <laughs> no, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Oh, thou dissembling cub! What wilt thou be when time hath sown a grizzle on thy cage? Farewell, and take her. But direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith. Oh, thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, <laughs> a surgeon! <laughs> Send one presently to Sir Toby. What is the matter? Has broke my head across, and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. For the love of God, your help. I had rather than forty shillings I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman wants Cesario. 
We took him for a cow. <laughs> My gentleman, Cesario. I'm slightly serious! <laughs> you broke my head for nothing! And that, that I did, I set on to do by Sir Toby! Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you! You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespake you fair and hurt you not! If a bloody coxcomb be and hurt you, and hurt me! You set nothing by bloody coxcomb! Here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more. He had not been in drink. You went to do other gates and he did. How now, gentlemen, how is it with you? So what is hurt me and there's an end of it. So, the cedic surgeon. No, oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby. And now we're going to the size of the Senate at 8 in the morning. And he's a rogue and a passing measure of companion. I hate a drunken rogue. Oh, we're with him. Who has made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby. For we'll be dressed together. Will you? An ass! <laughs> I must have done no less in wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. <laughs> Even for the vows we made each other, but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons? A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, my dear Antonio, how the hours have racked and tortured me since I have lost thee. Sebastian, are you? <laughs> Fierce thou that, Antonio. How have you made division of yourself? <laughs> An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. <laughs> Stand there. I never had a brother. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of uh, Messaline. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears that fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died a day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirty years. That record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortal act, the day that made my sister thirteen years. <laughs> if nothing led to make us happy both but this my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me. Till each circumstance of time, place, fortune do cohere and jump that I am Viola. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden queen. By whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady. You have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> <laughs> Nor are you therein, by my life, deceived. You are betrothed, both to a maid and man. Be not amazed, right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy rack. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. <laughs> and all those sayings will I overswear. Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> Give me thy hand, <laughs> and let 
me see thee in thy woman's weeds. <laughs> the captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. Fetch him out, Holio, hither. He shall enlarge him. And with less. Now I do remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he is much distracted. <clears throat> How does he, sir? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at the spades end, as well as a man in his case may do. Has he writ a letter to you? I should have given it you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness, and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right, or you much shame. Think of me as you please, I leave my duty a little unthought of, and speak out of my injury. Madeline Snowholio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. This savor is not much of distraction. See him delivered. Murat, bring him hither. My lord, so please you these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it. So please you hear it my house. And at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him. So much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. And because you called me master for so long, here is my hand. From this time forth, you shall be your master's mistress. <laughs> <laughs> you are she. Notorious wrong! Have I, Marvel? No. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not know that I is your man. Right from it, if you can, in hand or phrase, or say it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, granted then. And tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor? Bad me come smiling and cross-guarded to you, to put on yellow stockings, and to frown upon Sir Toby in the light of it. And acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priests, and made the most notorious gack and gowl that air invention played on? Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, but out of question is Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me it was she first told me thou wast mad. Then camest in smiling and in such forms as here were presupposed upon me in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak. Most freely do I confess myself, and Sir Toby set this device against Malvolio here, on some stubborn and uncourteous parts we conceived against him. Mariah had written the letter at Sir Toby's great importance. In recompense whereof you have married her. How with a sparkful malice it followed might rather pluck on laughter than revenge, that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how have they that thee? Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude. One Sir Topaz, sir. But that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember, madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal and smile not his gad? 
And thus, the whirly gig of time brings in his revenges. I will be revenged on the whole back of you! You have been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and then treat him to a peace. When golden time convents, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come. For so you shall be while you are a man. <laughs> When in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress, his fancy's queen. <laughs> when that I walk. And the little tiny boy with the hay-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it rained at every day. But when I came to man's estate with the hay-ho, the wind and the rain, against knaves and thieves men shut their gate, for the rain it rained at every day. But when I came, alas, too wide, with the hay-ho, the wind and the rain, my swaggering could I never fry, for the rain it rained at every day. But when I came unto my bed, with the hay-ho, the wind and the rain, with toss pots still had drunken heads. For the rain, it rained at every day. A great while ago, the world began with the hey ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day.